So this series of videos that I'm going to make are all aimed at trying to bridge the gap between GCSE and A-level. So you're a year and GCSE student, you've just finished your course and you want to know what to do to best prepare yourself for A-level. Well, these videos are designed to do just that, to get you prepared. I see many students turn up to their first A-level maths lesson, uh, having forgotten a lot of their GCSE skills because they simply haven't practiced them for so long. So these videos are aimed at not ending up in that situation and making sure that your GCSE skills are as you left them before summer. So the first topic that we're going to look at in these sessions is rearranging formulae, which is something that comes up in all areas in A-level maths and beyond. So it's really important that this basic skill is practiced and is second nature to you. So let's illustrate some key points using this quite simple introductory example. So this one says rearrange the following formula to make x the subject and that old chestnut y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do it initially, what I'm going to call the mathematically correct way, where we do something to both sides as you've always been taught in school. Then I'm going to propose an alternative way of thinking about it that I personally think makes it a bit easier. Uh, you might disagree with me, in which case stick to the original mathematically correct way, as I'm going to call it. Uh, but if you like my way of thinking about it, feel free to choose that way as well. Because that's the thing about A-level maths, there are so many different ways of doing things. Uh, we can't possibly say that any particular one is the best in every situation. So as long as you clearly show your method and it's correct, then you will get the marks in an exam. So let's have a look at this in a certain way. Let's do it the way you've probably been taught at school. The mathematically correct way, as I'm going to call it. So the idea is that we want to do things to both sides of that formula to leave it saying just x equals to leave the x on its own. But the twist is that we choose the order in the opposite way that we normally would. So we're going for the reverse of bid mass this time. So going down the priority list, we see no subtractions. We see in addition, there it is there, we see a plus c. So... We need to undo that plus C. Now, to undo an operation, we do the opposite operation. So what we're going to do from both sides, we're going to take C from that side. And we're also going to take C from that side. And that leaves the left-hand side, if we take C, saying Y takes C equals. And the right-hand side, well, if we take C from a plus C, we end up with nothing. So we just end up with mx plus c takes c. But if we plus c then take c, we might as well have done nothing at all. So we're left with that there. So our next line is y minus c equals mx. Again, going down the list of priorities. No subtractions, additions. We see multiplication. So to undo that multiplication, we're going to have to do the opposite. So again, what we're going to do, it says m times x. So what we're going to do, we're going to divide by m to undo that times by m. So divide by m. And then what we're left with, so the left-hand side, if we divide the whole side by m, we get y minus c over m. And it's really important to emphasize what we're doing is dividing the whole side by m equals. So x times m divided by m. Well, we times by m, then divide by m, we might as well do nothing. So it just ends up saying x. So there we have it. We've got x being the subject of the equation. So we're done. But let's have a look at it in an alternative way now. So y equals mx plus c. And my method I'm going to show you isn't going to contradict what we've just done, but it's just going to make it hopefully seem a little bit simpler. Because what I imagine here is an x... That's wrapped in layers. The first thing we've done is we've times it by m to get mx. Then we've got a plus c. So much like when we're unwrapping a present, we unwrap the outermost layer first. So in this case, the outermost layer, or the thing furthest away, if you like, from x, is the plus c. It's this here. So to undo a plus c, we just take c. So y take c equals mx. And we've taken that C, we've unwrapped that outermost layer. So the next thing wrapped around that X is this M. 
So it's attached to the x by a times. So to unwrap that, we're going to divide by m. So divide by m, y minus c over m. And we've divided by m to unwrap that m from x. So we've ended up with the same result by thinking about it a little bit differently. So both ways I think are good. Obviously I prefer my own way, but if you don't, that's fine. Again, there's loads of different ways of doing these things that'll get exactly the same number of marks. But for all intents and purposes, both methods look the same on paper. So I've taken this question from my associated question sheet with this tutorial. And you can get that on my website, alevelmathsrevision.com. And it's taken from a, uh, a past A-level paper, an OCR MEI paper from June 2007, question two. And this is basically how these tutorials are going to work. We'll take an exam question, we'll work through it, applying the methods we've just learnt. And that's the way you should do it as well. Look at, look at any video tutorials, then practice, practice, practice the techniques learned, because that's the only way that you're going to get better at it. Now you'll notice there are a lot of questions that I've given you to do on the associated question sheet, but don't be daunted by that, nor should you stop as soon as you think you understand. Keep on practicing, even though you think you know how to do it, keep on getting quicker in it, because these skills, if you turn up to A level, maths, being able to just reel off all of these skills that we're going to practice over these tutorials, you'll have a massive head start over a lot of other students. So anyway, on to doing this question, I talk too much. So make t the subject of the formula, s equals a half a t squared. So I'm going to do it two ways again, the way that you've probably been taught it, and the way that I prefer to think about it. So what we always do, and it's very important you do this, start by copying out the question, s equals a half a t squared. Your solution should be a comprehensive uh, story of how you got from the start to the finish, from the start to your answer. So s equals a half a t squared. So what I'm going to do here to both sides, um, I can see attached to the t squared is a half a. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to think of it in two stages. I'm going to think of it, there's a half attached and there's an a attached. So first of all, to undo the times by a half, I'm going to times both sides by two. So I times the left hand side by two, I get 2s equals... Now, if I times the right-hand side by 2, and you don't necessarily need to write this bit out, I get that. And I can see that 2 times a half is just 1. So essentially, that, as we call it in maths, cancels, times this together to make 1. Right, so I've got one step closer. I've got 2s equals at squared. 2s equals at squared. So I can see attached to the t squared now, because I'm trying to make t the subject. I want it just in the end to say t equals. I can see attached to the t squared is an a. And that's attached by multiplication. So what I'm going to do here, to undo the times by a, I'm going to divide by a. Like that. So divide both sides by a. I get 2s over a equals. And if I divide the right hand side by a, it undoes that times by a to just get t squared. So I'm almost there, and we're about to encounter a really common problem when students are rearranging formulae at A level, because now I've got a t squared. Well, to undo that squaring the t, what I'm going to do is square root both sides. However, that's not quite correct, because the opposite of squaring isn't just square rooting. It's plus or minus square rooting because it can have a negative answer as well. So, for example, if x squared equals 9, x equals 3, i.e. the square root of 9, is definitely a solution. However, also minus 3 is a solution as well because minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. So the answer is plus or minus 3. So we haven't just rooted it. We've plus or minus rooted it. To get the answer so in a level you must have plus or minus so plus or minus root both sides i get 2s over a with a plus or minus there equals t and there we've made t the subject t equals plus or minus root of 2s over a so i'm going to do exactly the same question but in the way that i prefer so again s equals 
a half a t squared. So what we've done to t squared, well, what we've done to t rather, we've squared it, then we've times by a, then we've times by a half. That's the order that I envisaged that happened. Happen, so, happened. so what we're going to do, we're going to undo that. We're going to peel off the layers, but from the outermost layer first, from the last thing we did first. So the last thing we did was times by a half. So to undo that, we're going to times by two. And what I'm going to introduce now is a new symbol that you might or might not have seen before. And it's a symbol with an equal sign, with an arrow attached to it. And that symbol means leads to the direct consequence or... The technical name for it is implies that. So I'm going to do something that leads to this direct consequence. So s equals a half a t squared. Well, if I times both sides by 2, that leads to the direct consequence that 2s equals, and timesing a half by 2 just gives me 1. So a t squared. So that sign implies that, which means leads to the direct consequence. <laughs> Right, so now I've got t squared, and it's times by a. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unpeel that layer, unwrap that a from the t squared. So it's attached by a times. So if I divide by a, that implies that 2s over a. And the reason I divided by a was to peel off that a from the t squared, to just leave t squared. And finally, as we saw as when we did this example before, We've got t with a squared wrapped around it to unwrap that squared. We don't just square root, we plus or minus square root. So plus or minus 2s over a equals t. And there we have it, t is the subject. And I suppose technically speaking, if I truly want to write it with t the subject, I just swap the order like that. 2s over a. And there we have it. So the purpose of this example was to illustrate the significance of plus or minus square rooting rather than square rooting. So that was the purpose of this example. There's one more thing that I want to go through with you before I think you're ready to be let loose on the questions. So let's move on. So this question here says make x the subject of the equation y equals x plus 3 over x minus 2. Now, this is a sort of example where students fall over all the time. A common uh, incorrect thing to do would be to say, well, we've got x on top and x on bottom, so let's just cancel them out. But that's such a bad thing to do. Basically, the cancellation rule only applies when we can take out a factor from both the top and the bottom of x. So, for example, let's say we've got 2x plus xy over 5x take xz. So notice that the top and the bottom will factorise. They all have a factor of x in common. So x, 2 plus y, over x, 5 minus z, equals, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this out uh, slightly differently. I'm going to separate out the fractions into, uh, into factors. So I've got x over x times 2 plus y over 5 minus z. Well, x over x is just 1. And that's the reason cancelling, if you like, works. Because we can take out factors that will divide by each other to make 1. In this example here, we can't do that. So I actually hate the term cancelling, to be honest. I prefer to think of it as factors of 1. So if we take x from the top as a factor, take x from the bottom as a factor, and separate out the fraction, it gives me an x over x, i.e. 1, times that. So we might as well not have done the x divided by x at all. And that's the reason cancellation, as it's called, works. But as I say, the point I'm trying to illustrate is it doesn't apply here. So now make x the subject of the equation. So x needs to be got on its own, just saying x equals. Well, the problem here, and the reason I've chosen this example, is because notice the x is in two places, both on the numerator and the denominator. And that's bad news when trying to make something the subject. So first of all, we need to shift this from the denominator. So I can see that I've got x plus 3 divided by x minus 2. And I'm going to stick with my way of doing this now. So 
basically, I want to peel off that x minus 2. Um, it's currently been divided, so to peel that x minus 2 off, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to times by x minus 2. So y times x minus 2. And don't forget the imply sign. So that implies that y times x minus 2. Now I've times by x minus 2. I peel that off. I end with end up with x plus 3. And now I've got all the x's on the numerator. So I need to start gathering them up on the same side. So this implies that if I multiply out the brackets, yx minus 2y equals x plus 3. So now I need to get all of these onto the same side, all of these x's onto the same side. Well, if I want to get this over to that side, it's currently a positive x, I subtract it. So I get this implies that yx minus 2y minus x equals just 3. Now this minus 2y doesn't belong because it's not got x's in it. So I'm going to take that over to the other side as well. So to undo a minus 2y, I'm going to add 2y. So this implies that yx minus x equals 3 plus 2y. And we're almost there. All the x's are on the same side, but they're not necessarily in the same place now. So what I'm going to do to get them in the same place is factorise them. So x bracket, both have a factor of x in common. y take 1 equals 3 plus 2y. Let's divide the page down the middle rather than start a new one. So this implies that. So I've got x times y minus 1. So I want to peel that layer off the x. I want to peel that layer, which is y minus 1, connected by a multiplication. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to divide by y minus 1. So to peel that layer off, divide by y minus 1 equals 3 plus 2y over y minus 1. And there we have it, we made x the subject. So the reason that I wanted to go through this particular example was this is an example of ones with the variables in two places. And that, again, is a key technique that we're going to have to use all the way through A-level maths. So have a go at all the questions that are provided. You can find those at alevelmathsrevision.com in the Bridge in the Gap section. And full handwritten solutions have been provided to these, as I think it's important uh, when building your skills up like this, that you see how a teacher would actually do these questions rather than just give you an answer. So there's more of these videos to come. So if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get notifications of when a new one's made, but it will be every Friday.